So basically, we will discuss about the hypertension in pregnancy. Okay, why is it so important the hypertension in pregnancy? Because in pregnancy, they can induce physiologically they can induce the hypertension conditions, and they can present it with a different presentations compared to the person compared to the non-pregnant um, woman okay so hypertension in pregnancy what is basically hypertension in pregnancy so there are a few things that we are going to discuss here there are definitions and up to the preeclampsia and eclampsia okay <coughs> So what are the definitions of the hypertension? Hypertension in pregnancy is defined as a systolic blood pressure equal or more than 140 mmHg and a diastolic blood pressure equal or more than 90 mmHg. This is the same with a normal hypertension people with a non-pregnant woman. Okay? So there are few classifications the uh, of hypertension in pregnancy so there are chronic hypertension pregnancy induced hypertension preeclampsia or eclampsia and chronic hypertension with a superimposed preeclampsia so basically we will divide clinically we will divide the the condition with um before 20 weeks and after 20 weeks okay so for before the 20 weeks before 20 weeks of pregnancy when the the, the woman develop hypertension we call it chronic hypertension because it is a different cause it is not caused by pregnancy alone so <coughs> usually this also with a uh, presented with a persistent elevated blood pressure for more than 12 weeks postpartum so chronic hypertension they may develop the chronic hypertension probably during the pregnancy uh, or before the pregnancy itself okay so that's not uh, because that's not due to the um, due to the uh, pregnancy itself so usually because of the development of placenta development of placenta and then the maturity and then the blood flow is okay usually at 20 weeks. So pregnancy induced hypertension. Pregnancy induced hypertension is the condition where the patient had hypertension after 20 weeks of pregnancy and usually resolve by 12 weeks of postpartum. Okay. So chronic hypertension with superimposed preeclampsia. Okay, so this patient had chronic hypertension. This patient had chronic hypertension and then after 20 weeks there is an increased severity of the blood pressure plus with the presence of the proteinuria and so this we call it superimposed preeclampsia. So for chronic hypertension we need to clarify more about chronic hypertension. Chronic hypertension it can be two essential or secondary causes so essential hypertension with, without other causes probably genetic causes or the secondary causes probably due to the pathology pathology uh, something that uh, uh, abnormal in the kidney pathology in the kidney okay causing causing the increase um, in impair of the, the the impair of the kidney causing increase of blood pressure the uh, changes the the impact of the um, aldosterone level, thyroid level, the endocrine hormones that pro can also promote to the hypertension, and also probably they have the patient may presented with uh, uh, SLE systemic systemic lupus erythematous. They also can uh, presented with hypertension. So this this group of people. We call it chronic hypertension. Okay. So, <coughs> for preeclampsia, 
What is preeclampsia? Preeclampsia is the hypertension occur after 20 weeks of pregnancy and plus with a significant proteinuria. So, um, you, when you do the 24 hour urine collection, so you will see that there is a 300 milligram of protein in 24 hours or when you do the urine FEME, you will see the 1 plus or 2 plus. So basically, when you do FME, you must exclude one thing first, infection, because urinary tract infections in pregnancy is very common. Okay, so when, uh, and then the urinary tract infection usually always presented with proteinuria. So we must to exclude that if the patient had 1 plus and then the patient had urinary tract infection, probably it's not preeclampsia. Okay, so for eclampsia is the presence of tonic clonic seizure in women with a preeclampsia that cannot be attributed to the other causes. Patient presented with tonic clonic seizure during pregnancy without any other uh, causes such as uh, CNS causes or other metabolic problems. So we diagnose it as a eclampsia during pregnancy. Um, give a, with evidence by high blood pressure, uncontrolled blood pressures, and all the symptoms that I will talk about later. So there are few, there are predisposing factors that promotes to the pre hypertension in pregnancy. So we will divide it into maternal and fetal. Okay. So, for maternal, it is common to a woman which, who is primate. Primate gravida means that this is for the first time they had, they had, uh, they, this is the first time they are pregnant. And usually, they are in the range of extreme age. Means that below than 20 years old and above than 35 years old. And it is evidence that the patient with previous history of Pregnancy induced hypertension and preeclampsia, they have higher risk of um, developing uh, PIH or preeclampsia in, uh, in in the next pregnant pregnancy. Okay, so patient with obesity, patient with a pre-existing pre-existing medical uh, illness such as diabetes, chronic hypertension, autoimmunities, and chronic kidney disease, or or with a family history. Uh, either mother or sister and so on. Okay, so for the for the fetal, when the patient is had a multiple, when the babies had uh, when the woman had multiple pregnancy, so the 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 incidence the risk become more higher, and the patient had high rate for more, the risk become more higher, and so as well as triploidy and hydrophilus. So the physiology, the pathophysiology is actually um, cannot unable to. Uh, we are unable to fully understood what is the exact mechanism. But there are few theories behind that, and probably have uh, general ideas. Okay, so uh, it's actually uh, related about the abnormal placenta perfusions, and this will lead uh, will lead uh, will. Um, promotes, uh, stimulates the production of the toxins and causing endothelial dysfunctions and damage. So basically, here's the picture. So in normal pregnancy, usually they have uh, villous uh, tropoblast cells, and then during the when they develop preeclampsia with a and a fetal growth restriction, restrictions. So the placenta villus became more fewer and then there you can see the uh, altered blood flow characteristic and as well as the radial artery okay, you look at the spi spiral uh, artery okay and then you look at the uh, uh, you look at the uh, spiral artery became narrow in the preeclampsia so because of uh, abnormal perfusions in the in the placenta promotes okay so there's a uh, promotes of VEGF and PIGF 
So basically, in normal, there is a normal VEGF and PIGF, and to maintain the normal endothelial functions. So if there is um, uh, if there is a uh, toxins uh, such as SFIT1, and this will uh promotes the free VEGF and the PIGF may lower, may became lower. So basically, the balance became um unbalanced. So this will promote the endothelial dysfunctions. So when there is endothelial dysfunctions, it doesn't affect only one part of the body. It will affect all the other organs because the all the organs are perfused. Okay, so this patient may had multi organ uh, problems, dysfunctions. Okay, they pay, uh, may be well presented with hypertension, glomerular dysfunction, proteinuria, brain edema, liver edema, and coagulation abnormalities. So here's the progression of the preeclampsia. 